interview that we did together. And later on, we did several other articles. I think the one we were proudest of it was actually done in the, in the Washington area. Uh, many years ago, the, the writer, the hard-boiled writer James M. Cain lived in Maryland. He lived, this is, uh, all his books were out of print, Double Indemnity, and The Postman Always Rings Twice, and Mildred Pierce, and he was 84 years old and lived in this dusty house in Maryland, and Peter and I went to the house and spent six hours talking to James M. Cain and did the only interview ever about James Cain, M. Cain's film career. That, I don't know if you've ever heard about that, but that's one of the, you know, a coup for, um, for both of us. Um, the style, I said again, of Peter, he was, you know, he was the guy that talked and talked, and I was sort of, the, I think, the quiet guy. But his friendliness, again, just was something that I, I wish I could do it. I, and I, again, I just had a little glance from maybe 35 years ago, and I don't, there's no story, but I, I just want to give you a little snapshot that we were in an elevator in New York, and there was an African-American guy who was the elevator man, and as we rode up down the elevator, Peter had this long conversation with him, introduced himself, and they were talking away, and I got off the elevator, I said, how do you do that, Peter? I am so shy, I can't just talk to people. How do you, and he just didn't understand it, because that was Peter. And, and he really was, you know, we use these cliches, the most democratic guy, the stories of Pet, <coughs> pardon me, Peggy Parsons, and not only is he talking to the curator at the National Gallery, but every other person, he knows them all, that is, that's Peter. And I'm sure all of you, I, I've never been to this club before, but I'm sure all of you have had an experience of just chatting with a guy, chatting with him um, on and on and on. Um, helpful guy, that's what David Darcy was saying, Again, a snapshot. We were at Con one year. I was pickpocketed. My, uh, my, I lost uh, all my papers. Peter took, I think, eight hours. He walked, went with me to the police station, since I, again, don't speak French, so he could translate with me and left the festival. He had all sorts of assignments to do because Peter was my good friend. He's not going to leave me in a lurch, and, and, and we spent all that time together. Uh, a different part of Peter you might know, Peter is an expert on finance. This is another thing, besides everything else, the guy knew his stock market. I, he knew everything about how to, how to uh, you know, he had this kind of yuppie side, for, uh, which is really strange. I'm, I'm the owner of a condo in Cambridge, which I'll, I will, next month it will be finally paid off. The reason I own it, this is really Peter Burnett. Peter Burnett came to visit me once in Boston. I was like, you know, a hippie kid. And I was a renter, and he said, you got to buy a house. I said, well, no, I'm just going to rent. No, you've got to buy. Well, you know, renting is just like, no, you must buy. And he spent a whole afternoon brainwashing me into buying a condo. And that's, and I, I have it really. I would, if he hadn't done that, I would still be a rent, an old, the oldest renter in the world. But that, that's what I would be. You know. So thank you for that. Um, Okay, what else do I want to say about it? Okay, well, I was trying to figure out, this is a, this is, I, Peter's such a familiar part of my life that I, this is really strange. I cannot remember the last moment that I saw him in person because like all of us, I assume this is gonna be another time. I think it was when I went to Wake Forest to, 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 be, to, to be at River Run, um, I remember I was on a panel. I remember Peter and I had a fight on the panel. That annoying guy, he didn't agree with my opinion. I didn't agree with his opinion. That was, I remember that. But I don't remember saying goodbye to him and that in person. Um, I had conversations with him on the phone the last year. Um, one I, I mentioned earlier, which was amazing. Uh, you know, Peter had a, a, comp a rich and complicated love life after his wife Lynn died with some girlfriends that turned out quite problematic, but he had, <laughs> but uh, that's Peter. But his last girlfriend who was here, Donna, looked like that, that beautiful relationship that we all, after your first marriage, that you want to have. Um, I was saying, I, I decided one day I'd just call Peter at home and see how he's doing. And I'm thinking he's in, in Wake Forest, and I get him on the phone, and there's this kind of ambient whooshing sound, and 
and dripping water and I said, Peter, you know, hi, how are you? He said, I can't really hear you. Donna and I are in the rainforest. And this was great. They were in a, uh, they, and that was so unlike Peter to ever, in his earlier life with Lynn, she liked to go to movies and was an intellectual and didn't like the sun, but that Peter was, was you know, heading out to new directions at the end was great. So the last things I heard from Peter, and these were phone conversations, was new love life, fantastic. I have a great girlfriend. I'm very happy. Um, this is going to be embarrassing. The best sex of my life, can I say that? That's what he said. Um, I think that's, that's great when you're in your 60s and it was just, just a, you know, I mean, that's the great tragedy. He was in such a happy state when this, this, uh, this tragedy occurred. Um, I sent, when he was in Cannes this summer, I got a couple of emails and I sent an email um, which said, Dear Peter, um, we haven't seen each other in person for a while. When, you know, are you back in the States? Give me a call. Come up and visit me in Boston. And I gotta say, unfortunately, that email was one day before Peter's death. So I so so my last memory of Peter are, you know, happy emails and happy phone conversations. And I think that's the great ambivalence we feel. Is it better? To go out when you're happy and you go, well, the person, is, as his sister Rose said, everybody in Peter's family, all the men live to be 85 and older. It's, Peter is robbed at you know, 66, but clearly he was a happy guy when it happened. Um, I guess that's better than being a sad guy when you go, but boy, 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 do we you know, miss him so much. So I, I, I say for all of you here, I, you know, I love you, Peter, and we all love Peter Brunette. And